In this video, I'm going to introduce you to the new RAD drop-down list for WinForms. With this control, you can easily display a drop-down list of information for the users of your application to select from. This control is essentially a new and improved version of the RAD combo box, and we'll be replacing it completely sometime in the future. It features various improvements in its UI, performance, and data handling. Let's take a closer look at using this control. So I'm going to go ahead and drag out a RAD drop-down list control from the toolbox into the main form of a newly created WinForms application. And I'll go ahead and resize it. And if we take a look at the properties window over here, as you can see, it contains uh, most of the basic properties you'd expect to see, uh, you know, things for scrolling, background color. Uh, it also includes uh, properties specific to animation, uh, different drop-down sizes, drop-down style, uh, you know, just various things related to a drop-down control. So let's go ahead and uh, add some items to this control. So if I select it, as you can see, I can add items in unbound mode by expanding this items property and just simply clicking the add button in the collection editor. I can also use data binding with this control and that's actually the example I'm going to be showing you. So I'll go ahead and uh, leave this list clear and click OK. So to use data binding, I first need to create an object uh, to use with data binding. So I'm going to create a new item. So I'm going to add a new item. And this will be a class. And let's call this my item. So I'm going to make this a public class. And it's going to contain two properties, one for uh, the name of this item and one for the value of this item. So I'll do public string name. And I'll just be a get set property. And we'll also do public string value which will also be a get set property. And this is the item we're going to bind to our, our uh, rad dropdown list. So I'm going to switch back over to the main form now. And I'll go ahead and compile the application real quick to make sure that our uh, new item gets added to the assembly. And the next thing I'm going to do is make sure that the rad dropdown list is selected once again. And I'm going to scroll up to its data source property here in its properties window. And I'm going to add a new project data source. And let's use an object. So I'll click Next. And we're going to use the object that I just created, which is my item. So I'll make sure to select that and click Finish. And now that we've set the data source, we also need to make sure to set the display member and the value member. So the display member is actually what the user is going to see in the RAD dropdown list when they're selecting items. So we'll want this value to be the name of an item. And now let's scroll down to value member. So value member is uh, basically the value we're going to be working with in the code. Uh, maybe it might be an ID of an item or something that we need to reference in the code behind somehow. So we're going to go ahead and set value member to be value. So as you can see, it's now created a my item binding source object for us to use. And this is going to be uh, the data source that has been assigned to our rad dropdown list. So we need to make sure to add some items or create some items that we can use with this binding source and the code behind. So I'm going to right click and select view code. And I'll go ahead and come right here into the constructor. I'm going to create a list of my item. And we'll just call this my items. And to this list, I'm just going to simply add four brand new custom items. So my items dot add. And we'll say new my item and then this item is going to contain it's going to have a name so we'll just set the name to item 1 and it's also going to have a value so we'll set the value to value 1 and I'm going to go ahead and cut and paste this a few more times just so we have a, a few more items to work with and so the second item will just be item 2 and value 2 and the third item will be item 3 and value 3 and then finally, the fourth item will be item four and value four. So now that we have these set up now, I can just simply say my items binding source dot data source equals my items. And so if I just simply click run now, the application is going to compile and start up. And once it does, I should be able to see those items in the uh, drop down list. So if I click this, as you can see, here are all of the items that have been data bound to this control. And just to take this one step further, I'm going to close out real quick. Let's add a text box to this application that shows us which value we've selected. 
So I'm going to come up here inside of the uh, toolbox and we'll scroll down to a rad text box and drag that into the, con into the uh, main form of the application. And since we're using a binding source, I actually don't really have to do anything extra on the code behind. I can just make sure that the rad text box is selected, then scroll up to the top to its data bindings property. And I want its text property to automatically be set to the value of the item that's selected in our binding source. So I'll just go ahead and select value and I'll click run to compile and run the application once again. And as you can see now, when I select different items, we can see the value of the item that I select in the rad dropdown list. So as you can see with the new rad dropdown list for WinForms, you can easily display a dropdown list of information for users to select from. Thanks for watching.